Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on creating cinematic trailer music. I'm Martin of Epic Composer, and today I'm going to show you how I created the hybrid orchestral trailer music for our Monument Sample Library trailer, using Monument and Monument Pro almost exclusively. For uh, those of you who haven't seen our Monument trailer video yet, I thought we'd just start by watching it together once more and listening to the finished music. Alright, so before jumping into the track and see what it is made of, I quickly wanted to talk you through the structure of the track first. So as you might already know, movie trailers in general follow a very particular structure or story arc if you will. And so should the music that is produced for them. So although the video we are creating music for isn't exactly a movie trailer, it still follows this very distinctive trailer structure, which I wanted to be reflected by the music as well. To uh, make the structural elements more visible, I used Logic's arrangement track and drew in some blocks so you can follow along more easily. So let's start with the first element, the intro of our track. The intro needs to establish a certain mood and set the scene for what's to come, both in the music and the video. I wanted to keep the intro quite simple, so the pictures can speak for themselves. And uh, as you can see, our intro is composed of only four layers, some low booms to accentuate the cuts and title cards, a textual drone, a quick riser and some whooshes. Together they sound like this. <laughs> okay. Moving on to the next part, the build-up. Here we want to build tension towards the climax of our track and establish a sense of urgency and pace. In order to do so, I added a simple 8th note synth bass and a little synth plug line in the second half. I also added some dark signature Bram sounds to make the part sound even more ominous and foreboding. Let's listen to the build-up in whole for a second. So, uh, as you can hear, I added a little break in between the build-up and the next part. This is actually a pretty common thing in trailer music, since it allows the audience's ears to reset. Some silence before our big climax part also helps to make it sound much more massive when it kicks in. It also gives the video editor some room to cut your music and rearrange the parts if needed. So, to transition into the break, I added a combination of sound effects to make it a bit more interesting. We have a short riser that leads into a downer and some cool whoosh sounds. This creates quite a complex sequence of effects that makes the break sound much more interesting than just a riser or a single hit. From my work as a trailer music composer, I know that video editors particularly like these effects combos because they provide them with much more creative freedom. Okay. Onwards to the main part of our trailer music track, the climax. So this is where we bring in the big guns and go all in. For the climax, I wanted to create a massive wall of sound and I tried to achieve this by adding quite a few layers of instruments. First of all, I added some more trailer hits and whooshes to really accentuate the first beat of each bar. This gives the track the strong rhythmic pace it needed. Next, I recorded an eighth note bass pulse which represents the sonic backbone of the track. The bass is accompanied by some huge aggressive bram sounds that really help to drive our chord progression forward. 
I also added some orchestral elements, some strings and brass. The strings are playing melodic arpeggios and rhythms while the brass performs root notes in big octaves. Finally, I added some synth pulses that play together with the strings and a hi-hat to push the rhythm forward even more. Let's hear what it sounds like all together. Okay, so towards the end of a climax we transition into a quick and punchy drum fill that is emphasized even more by the strings and synth pulses. I even cut up the riser to go along with the choppy feel of the end of the climax. While in our particular video the fill was used to emphasize the quick changes of titles, it's generally a very good idea to bring in some rhythmic complexity at the end of your trailer track, so the editor can apply quick cuts and visual effects if needed. Also, you can clearly hear that I left our chord progression hanging after the fill and didn't resolve to our root note just yet. This really helps keeping the listener on the edge of their seat so they can hold their breath for the final resolution of the music. Alright, so after our big finale, we again have a short break to make this extend the breath holding moment for just a little longer. Then we finally resolve to our signature sound, in this case a menacing bending Brahms sound and return to our root note. This is where the name of our sample library, Monument, is finally revealed and where the title of a movie would appear if this was a movie trailer. Let's have a listen to our outro real quick. Alright, let's go back to the beginning of our track and I'll show you which sounds are used and how I process them. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, most of the sounds used in this trailer come from our Monument and Monument Pro libraries, with the help from a few third-party orchestral and synth patches. Okay, so I started mapping out the first few bars of our track with some booms from the Monument sound pack. Instead of using the same sample over and over, I use different boom sounds to have a bit more tonal variation. I also placed a quick little whoosh sound underneath the final boom of the intro, to transition into the next part. Next I felt like a quick musical ramp into the track would help with the first part of the video that slowly fades in. For the ramp I used a combination of a riser and two layered whoosh sounds. I cut up the riser and only used its final bar or so. Then I added an atmospheric drone sound from Monument's Atmos sound category, which slightly changes and evolves over time and gives us a cool suspenseful sonic backdrop. That's really it for the intro. You see, sometimes less is more and since we have some cool pictures to go along with it, I didn't feel the need to add anything more to the intro. Okay, let's move forward to the build up. Percussion-wise, we continue with our booms from before, but also introduce some whoosh hits to get a bit more punch and aggression. Same as with the booms, I use different hits throughout the build to make it a bit more interesting. Our atmospheric drone from the intro just continues to play through the build-up to make both parts sound more coherent. So, nothing really new here. One of the major new elements of the build-up is a synth bass that plays a simple arpeggio line. For this, I just dialed in a quick patch in Serum and used an automated low pass filter that slowly opens up over time. Then I bounced the MIDI part in place in case I'd want to further process the bass sound. Turns out I didn't. Next, I added a sound from our Brahms category because I wanted to sonically emphasize the titles that appear in the video. As you can see, I didn't use the original clean version of the sound, but one of its variations. In Monument and Monument Pro, each of the 220 design sounds also comes in three additional variations that differ in sound and texture. That gives you over 800 sounds in total to work with. You get an ambient variation which has more space, stereo width and a longer reverb tail in general. There's also a crunch variation which uses analog tape and tube saturation and distortion to make the sounds even more gritty and aggressive. 
For this part of the track, however, I use the third variation category, which is called warm. Here, the sounds are gently filtered and processed to give them a warmer and rounder feel. I didn't want to go all out with my Bram sound at this point yet, so the warm variation was just what I needed for this Bram sound. I just dragged in the sample from the respective warm variation folder and copied it over a second time. Okay, so next we have a quick little synth pulse that just works as a rhythmic counter melody, if you will, to the synth bass arpeggio. Since this particular synth line will play a bigger role later in the track, I just wanted to hint at it in the build up. Again, just a simple patch I created in Serum. I think I added some generous amount of delay to make it sound a little bit more interesting. Okay, now finally I added another short riser at the top here to help us create a transition into the next part, the break in this case. Again, I just used one of our long risers and trimmed the beginning, so we just hear the final part of it. Most of the risers I created for Monument are between 15 to 30 seconds long, so you can really create those long dynamic risers if you like to. In the break we have a complex sound effects combination made up of a shuddering downer and some cool whoosh effects that lead into the climax. Again, I just chose some samples from the Monument sound pack and dragged them into the project, so no need for any additional processing really. Alright, now we're back at the climax of our track. I really wanted it to sound as epic and massive as possible, so I added some synth sounds, effects and even some orchestral elements. Let's have a look at the tonal backbone of our track, which in this case are the Brahms. So if I open the Brahms folder here, you can see that I switch from audio to MIDI with these three tracks here. I use the new interface of Monument Pro this time, because it allows me to change the root node of a sample very easily using key switches. So as you can see in the MIDI data, I used one of the Brahms samples here at D-sharp 2 and used the key switches below to change its tonal center. Okay, now since I felt the third note, the C sharp, was a bit low and got buried in the mix a bit, I just duplicated the patch and pitched it up one octave using a plugin on the channel strip. So when played together, now the C sharp cuts through much better. I also added another Brahms sound, which is called Liquid Steel. It has this unique metallic quality to it that I really like for this track. So I just duplicated the contact patch once again and copied the MIDI data. Together they sound like this. Okay, that's it for the Brahms, let's move on. So, right at the top here I added a string arpeggio line to the root notes of the Brahms. I used Albion 1's short strings ensemble for that, and although this particular patch combines all the instrument groups of the string sections into one, the arpeggio is mostly played by the violas and celli. That's why I pent the whole thing a bit more to the right, which is where the celli usually reside in an orchestral setup. Let's have a listen to it in solo. Now that the arpeggio was in place, I felt like the track could use some additional drive from the string, so I just copied the patch and recorded the simple 16th note spiccato line to support the chord progression. Since this line is played about an octave higher than the arpeggio, it's mostly performed by the first and second violins. 
So same as before, I pan this track a bit more to the left since that's where the violins usually sit. Panning these orchestral elements a bit more towards the edges creates a nice hole in the middle for all our percussive sounds and synthesizers. So when played together, the strings create a nice and wide orchestral accompaniment for the other elements. Yeah, very basic stuff, but I think it fulfills its purpose quite well. Okay, on to the second orchestral element of our track, the brass section. So here I just wanted to get some additional mid-range and raspiness from the brass, so I chose a French horns patch for that. I think it was the 9 French horns patch from Metropolis Arc 1. I just laid down the very basic root notes of our chord progression in octaves, and didn't even bother to write the modulation wheel, as it seems. Not very realistic, but since it's not a very prominent feature of the overall track, I think I got away with it quite well. Okay, so maybe a bit more interesting than that is what's happening in the synth pulses down here. As you can see, the first two MIDI tracks look very similar to the strings tracks. In fact, they are just exact copies of what the strings are playing. So what I did here is I created yet another two basic synth patches in Serum and had them play what the strings are playing. The only real difference is that I panned the synth patches to the opposite sides of the strings to separate the sounds from each other and get a bit more stereo width out of them. This is what the synth pulses sound like on their own. And this is with the strings added. Okay, so there's yet another synth pulse track down here. Remember how I said I was hinting at something that would come in the climax? This is it. Just another rhythmic line that goes well with the other two synth pulses. Together they create a slightly more complex figure that serves both as a nice melodic and rhythmic background element. Alright, so before I forget, we also have a couple of bass tracks that build the sonic foundation together with our Brahm sounds. The first one here is just another synth bass pulse I created with Serum and it chucks along in 16th notes. As you can hear in the end there, it matches the rhythmic structure of our drum fill, which creates a nice and clean ending. I felt like my first synth bass patch had a great sounding mid-range, but it wasn't really giving me the sub-frequencies I needed. That's why I added another synth patch that is mostly a sub-sine wave with added harmonics. This is just a basic sound from Omnisphere, I think. I rendered both patches in place again to save some CPU resources. Let's hear how the second sine wave supports our bass rhythm. See, now we have a really solid low frequency range in the track. 
Okay, now before moving on, I wanted to show you a quick little trick I like to use on my bass tracks. As you can see right here, I've added a compressor to my synth bass group. It's not there to compress the synth basses, but to control the overall low end clarity of my mix. You know, with the trailer music, there's always so many elements fighting for attention at the same time, especially in the low end of our track. Depending on the sounds you choose, layering big hits together with low bass lines can sometimes muddy up your mix and steal a significant amount of precious headroom that goes to waste unnecessarily. So, in order to make room for our big trailer hits without muddying up the mix, I sidechained my hits to this compressor on the synth bass subgroup. You can see up here next to the sidechain, it says bus 11, which is my trailer hit bus. Now, every time a trailer hit is triggered, our bass signal drops in volume for a short amount of time before it gets back up. This allows us to give both elements their space and prevents muddy sounding frequency clashes, particularly in the low end. So, of course, I could have used other tools like a multiband compressor, for example, to just make the low frequencies of our bass group drop with each trailer hit. But since I was moving forward quickly with this track, and I know it by heart, Logic's stock compressor was all I really needed for this moment. Okay, so with all those elements in place, I was already quite happy with the sound of my track, but it felt like it could use a little bit more rhythmic drive, like some sort of shaker or hi-hat. Instead of just dragging in a standard hi-hat sample, I wanted to experiment a bit. So what I did was, I quickly added another instance of Monument Pro and loaded a short hits patch. I found a sample with a nice attack and hi-end, and as you can see, I dialed down the release control to make it more and more snappy. I also turned up the low cut filter here so that all is left from the short hit is a quick burst of high frequencies, very similar to a hi-hat. In order to get even more snap out of it, I added an instance of Logic's stock envelope shaper to the channel strip, raised the attack portion and lowered the release portion of our sound. So as you can see, you can get a lot more out of Monument Pro than just the plain samples. If you experiment with the controls and tuning options of the interface, there's really a huge range of unique sounds and effects you can come up with. Okay, on to the final effect sections of our track. Let's start with the trailer hits. I just dragged in a couple of different trailer hits and layered them with each other. If we go down to the bottom here, there are two MIDI tracks also playing trailer hits. In this case, short hits. Now, when it comes to short hits, I really like to play with them as MIDI data, because it allows me to perform quick fills and rapid rhythms, much quicker than cutting and moving them around as audio. So, in the first patch, I just used one sample and layered it with the other trailer hits every other bar. I used Monument Pro's Easy Multi Effects sliders, which both add their own unique sequence of additional processing to the source sample. In case of our short hits, the Brutalizer and Finalizer give me a great sense of additional compression and distortion, which makes these hits sound even more aggressive and over the top. As you can see in the end here, the short hits follow my rhythmic fill of triplets and eighth notes. The second MIDI track is a copy of the first one, but I use different short hit samples to layer in at the end. Now, here you can see that I use different samples for each hit at the end, in order to give the fill a bit more of an organic feel. Using the very same sample in quick succession can often lead to a robotic and machine gun type of feel, which can of course be a desired effect, but for this track I wanted the fill to sound a bit more natural. Cool, hit's done, let's move forward to the whoosh effects of our climax. So, these sounds here are mostly quick whoosh ends or transitions I use to accentuate the images in the video. As you can see here, I just wanted to give some more emphasis to these scenes by supporting them with additional sound effects. Same with this one here. Okay, so finally we have some more rises to build up tension towards the end of our track. We have this long one that builds almost throughout the whole climax section 
and is cut up at the end to create a stuttering effect. Then we have a second short riser that comes in right before the fill, just to support the first riser. Okay, cool, that's pretty much it. After our massive climax part, we are going back to minimal for our final sound of the track. All we have here is a basic boom and whoosh sound and our signature bram. If I open the bram folder real quick here, you can see that it's composed of two individual layers. One is our bram sound from before and the other one is a cool descending tonal effect from our bands category. That's what it sounds like in solo. All I added was a bit of reverb to extend the tail of the sound a bit longer. And that pretty much sums up our little walkthrough and how to create cinematic trailer music. I really hope you enjoyed it and found some useful things in here and if you have any questions please feel free to ask them in the comments. If you like this video and want to see some more content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel, liking this video and hitting the notification bell so you know instantly when we're adding new stuff. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.